in this episode. I ride down a stream, then the road I was riding on ends in a massive ditch. I climb up over another high pass, where the fog rolls in, then the skies open up. And with all the rain, the water runoff starts ripping up the roads. But I finally make it to a stunning lake. Morning. Well, today we're going to be riding through some valleys and trying to find a lake. It's not that far, a couple hundred kilometres, but there was one report that the road wasn't too great. So we'll see if that's the issue or if we have to make an alternative route. Hopefully not. <laughs> quite cool this morning the donkeys are out on the road and it's time for me to get out on the road does that mean I'm a donkey let's go I was heading for Pangong Lake via the road that runs beside the Shyok River as I said just me and the donkeys out here rode out onto the flat plain. I took a left onto the dirt. Just pulled over to have a look at this zip line. It just seems to be in a random spot, side of mountain, on the road, nothing really here, 20k from anywhere. But they do have a stunning location. These two valleys, we get normal valleys, but these just look really, really high. So high. I made the turn back out of the two valleys and past the row of Buddhist shrines. Well, the water does come onto the road. Still struggling to understand why this wouldn't cause a problem in spring after the snow melt. I pass the road workers, making their way down to their current section. I got to the turnoff, to the road I came in on, down from the top of the pass. I took a left, as on the map, this linked up to the road, into the lake I'm trying to get to. It seems I must have missed a turn. No idea how I missed that. Okay, that is a weird place to park an excavator. Not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Well, that's...
that's unexpected. The road ending in a massive ditch. I looked around to see if I'd missed a turn off, but there was nothing. They said there might be some issues with the road, but no road at all. You can see the old roads up here. It finishes there, just where they're trying to put a new tunnel, and then it just stops as there's nothing. I guess I'm going the long way around. I was wondering why I'd seen nobody else since I turned onto this road at all. I've got my answer. There's nowhere to go. Oh well. <laughs> Plan B? Well, there wasn't a plan A, really, was it? Yep, it was an obvious sign. made it back to the turn off, so now I had to climb back over the high pass. Even the view in the rear vision mirror is epic. I made a quick change of gloves for the cold ahead. I could see the top of the pass ahead on the ridge. What a majestic valley. And with a rounded bottom, it's a sign it was created by a glacier. I had made the high point of the pass. It was now time to descend. I made it into Lay and rode straight through town and back out the eastern side. The new route would take me back over the mountain range, which meant I had another high pass to navigate. Just pulled over to unblock my ears and take off some of that warm gear and give my legs a bit of a break. Warm up. <laughs> it's getting a bit sore. Oh, might have something to drink and then keep on going towards this lake. I double checked the map to make sure I knew where the turnoff was. Then I got back on the bike. to a bit of a traffic jam. That is a lot of military support trucks. I had seen the valley behind the trucks had a massive open flat section of sand and that had given me an idea. There has to be some kind of image here. It was like a blank canvas with mountains in the background. I got a few shots and got back on the bike. I rode back through a soft section of sand. Luckily, it wasn't too deep as my soft sand riding skills are pretty average. I 
made the turn off to head up the next valley towards the mountain pass. I looked behind me and could see a storm and with the wind direction it looked like it was going to be coming up the valley. So hopefully I could get up the mountain before it hits. I looked back down the valley from where I'd come and it seemed I may have outrun the rain. Well, at least that storm. There were still clouds ahead. That's a cool looking track zigzagging its way up the mountainside. No idea how to get there. I think that's where I'm going. I rode through a small village and could feel some light rain, so I pulled over. I covered up my backpack and put my rain jacket on. I also swapped over my winter gloves due to the altitude gain ahead. It started to rain a little more. The road was now wet, so it was time to be very cautious. As if I slipped off here, the consequences can be rather unforgiving. To make things a little more interesting, the fog rolled in. So I know there's big drop-offs there, but you'd never know. I crept along, waiting for something to come out of the fog. I rarely looked down at my GPS map, but here I was checking to see if there was any turns coming up. It's any surprises. Prayer flags are normally put at the top of a pass, so I'm gathering I'd made it. I had reached the top of Chang La Pass, but this time I wouldn't be able to see the view. I regrettably didn't put rain pants on, so seeing that I was already soaked, and the fact this rain could last all afternoon, I thought it was best to get off the mountain as quickly and safely as possible. As the more rain, the more chance the mountain becomes unstable and can cause landslides and rivers to form across the road. of water started forming across the roads. I took the hairpin switchbacks down the last section before getting to the valley floor. I pulled over to get fuel as I wasn't quite sure when I'd next get the chance. This does look like another gorgeous valley. It's a pity to be coming through when it's raining. cold. Everything was good until it got really cold and then it was too wet to stop. It wasn't forecast for rain but anyway. I jumped under the covers of the bed for a while to try and warm up. Finally starting to warm up. It was getting cold coming off the top of that mountain but found this, I guess you'd call this in if you're in New Zealand, a batch, Australia, a shack, beach shack. 
located on the lake and there was so many of them I was just like oh as you can hear it is still raining I did look at the weather forecast and it said sunny maybe a cloud or two no chance of rain they got that wrong the lake itself is quite vibrant that really light turquoisey blue I saw it in the gap between two rain squalls <laughs> not much else to do I wait for this rain to hopefully stop as it's predicted and then yeah you actually go and have a look at the lake Till then, getting back in this bed with the tuna on top of me <laughs> to thaw out. It finally stopped raining, so I went outside to explore. A little bit of fortune, the heavy clouds have gone. <laughs> We're down to just the light stuff, the sprinkling. So I can actually see this lake and the hills, or is that mountains on the other side? It's pretty spectacular. I can't get any Wi-Fi, so although the place says it's got Wi-Fi just to get a weather report I'm gonna have a bit of wander around see what else I can find out here I walked down to the water's edge where they had a lot of prayer flags for those out there who may not know prayer flags are used to bless the surrounding countryside traditional prayer flags come in sets of five each color representing one of the five elements and the five pure lights blue for the sky and space white for the air and wind red for fire, green for water, and yellow for the earth. So I've worked out there's an issue with my photography technique when at altitude. And this is part of the reason. When I take a photo or normally filming with a longer lens and I don't have a tripod, I hold it tight to my body and hold my breath to try and get as a still shot as possible. But holding your breath at altitude <laughs> isn't a good thing. So all of a sudden I'm finding myself going <gasps> yeah, so Don't know how to get around that. Maybe bring a tripod The Sun started to peek through the clouds giving me a glimpse of how beautiful this lake and the surroundings were Such a fragile thing I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm it all In the next episode, I explore more of Pangong Lake Ride through incredible valleys and across high deserts Then I head up to the highest motorable road in the world the trees haven't started to shed Just feel the summer sun as it warms